I want to introduce you to wireless farm networking using the Airstone AirMesh products. My name is Bill Moffat. I'm the president and founder of Airstone Productivity. Our main product is the AirMesh hub, and that's the building block for your wireless farm network. It's very small, lightweight. It's very easy to mount on a pole or on the side of a, of a flat uh, post or something like that. The idea is that you put it way up in the air and, and connect it to an Ethernet cable that comes inside and connects to its power supply. The first Ethernet hub is called the Gateway Hub. You connect it to wherever you have internet access. That could be your home or your farm office or someplace else, uh, even somebody else's house if they're closer to town and have better air, have better internet access. You connect that first one up, you mount it up as high as possible, preferably 25 feet above any obstructions around it, and it gives you a nice strong Wi-Fi signal. Using that, you have Wi-Fi access all around your farmyard or wherever you mount that first hub so that you can have your own personal devices, your iPad, your smartphone, your laptop, and you won't have to use a cellular connection or something like that. You'll be able to use it outside up to half a mile away from where you're at. So the first hub is the most important one, and it's, like I said, called the Gateway Hub. Another important product is the air mesh receiver. This is a thing that receives the Wi-Fi from the hub and turns it into an Ethernet plug. The reason for this is twofold. First off, it's extremely handy for bringing your network into buildings. So you have a building that you want to have a computer inside of or a camera or something like that, but the Wi-Fi from outside won't penetrate the walls because Wi-Fi just doesn't do that very well. You put the receiver on the outside, bring that Ethernet cable, you can see coming out of the bottom, inside the building, and plug it into the power supply, and then you've got an Ethernet port on that power supply that you can plug things into. It's also useful for devices that just don't have Wi-Fi, only have an Ethernet connection, and that way you uh, can easily plug them in uh, without having to have Wi-Fi. So things like high-end IP cameras, uh, there are some grain dryer controllers, for instance, um, some uh, irrigation controllers, things like that that just don't have Wi-Fi. Um, so you use the air mesh receiver for those. The way it works is like this. You just put the receiver onto a building, for instance, or onto uh, whatever piece of equipment that you want to control and it talks to the hub automatically and gives you that connection wherever it is. So in this case, on the side of it, inside of the building, I should say, or on your grain elevator, uh, where it might be talking to an IP camera you've put up there. It might be talking to a grain dryer you've got underneath there. Uh, up to two miles away from the hub, you can have your internet connection. Now, the next piece of equipment here is the indoor AP, which goes kind of with the receiver or with the bridge, but it adds indoor Wi-Fi. So just like the hub is good for outdoor Wi-Fi, this brings the Wi-Fi inside your other buildings, uh, especially useful for steel buildings that the Wi-Fi from outside won't penetrate at all. You can just put the receiver outside, and as you see, this just plugs into the power supply of your receiver. You could also use it with a remote hub or a bridge radio, and it provides you Wi-Fi inside your building. So then you've got it like this. So where we had the receiver on the side of the building, on the inside now we have the indoor AP that's providing Wi-Fi inside the building, and you've got inside and outside Wi-Fi. Now, the next product that I wanted to talk to you about is the AirMesh Cab Hub. And that lets you have your network available on your tractors, your combines, your sprayers, pickups, ATVs, any vehicle that has one of these 12-volt cigarette lighter plugs, 
and some metal up high where you can put that magnetic mount antenna. This is just a normal air mesh hub. So it does the same things as an air mesh hub does, uh, including providing local Wi-Fi and connecting to the mesh. The advantage here is, of course, your iPhone won't talk to a hub that's two miles away, but this will. You put it up on top of your vehicle, it will talk to the nearest stationary hub and give you local Wi-Fi coverage that you can connect to with your laptop, your iPad, your smartphone, and with the computers inside of the cab of your vehicle, like your variable rate computer, so that you can automatically download prescriptions and upload your as applied data. So the way it works, very simply, like I said, that cab hub talks to the air mesh hub and it just makes your network mobile so that wherever you are, you're connected to your air mesh network. Now, you can use additional hubs to extend your network. And that's the magic of the mesh, is that all they need is power. So you can put them, for instance, in this case, on top of that building that's somewhere out there a couple miles away. You have electricity there, so you just bring the Ethernet cable inside the building, plug the power supply into the wall, plug that Ethernet cable into the uh, power supply, and that will give you internet coverage and Wi-Fi coverage out where that building is. In the lower right-hand corner and in the at the bottom here in that other field, we have solar-powered hubs with battery packs and solar panels. Those are available optionally from us or from Tycon. Um, all those do is provide power to the hub um, so that it works out there and extends your network out to the field. So this way, your tractor can be out in anywhere in this large field or down in that other field and still be in contact with your air mesh network. Now, the question you might reasonably ask, I certainly did, is what if you have fields that are more than two and a half miles away? This is where we come to the air mesh bridge. The air mesh bridge is really just a long wireless Ethernet cable. It allows you to extend your network up to five miles from one point to another. So to exhibit what I mean in this case, what I'm doing is I'm connecting one bridge, well, two bridges to my home router there where I started my network with the hub. So now I'll have the hub and two bridge radios. One of them is pointing out to one field where I have a building there. The other one is pointing out to another field in the upper left. And then in the upper right where I have that building and the hub, I've connected one of the bridge radios to that hub and I'm sending that signal out into another field. The same thing in the lower right hand corner where I've attached it to that hub with the solar panel and I'm going to beam it out into another field that's five miles away. Now once I have that out in the field I can connect more hubs to have Wi-Fi out in those fields. The bridge doesn't supply Wi-Fi but the hubs do so I just connect the other side of the bridge to the hub and I can continue to extend my network out into those distant fields, as you see. And I can go even further with this. So if I've got additional fields that are further away from those fields, I can use bridge radios attached to the hubs to extend out another five miles to those fields and then extend my Wi-Fi network out there with additional hubs. And I can go in all directions this way. I, I'm just running out of space on the page to show you how it all works. But between the bridges and the hubs, you can cover a great deal of distance and a great deal of area out on your farm so that you can have your Wi-Fi network out on the farm wherever you need it to use for whatever you want to use it for. And all of that data goes back through your home router so that it's not going directly to the internet. And if you want to capture things on your own uh, network attached storage device or whatever it may be, you have the opportunity to do that. In addition, if you're out in a distant field and you want to 
you get an invoice from someone on your laptop and you want to print it on your printer at home, just hit print and it just goes there because you're always on the same network. Another example, if you want to have a weather station or an IP camera out in one of these remote locations so that you can tell what's happening out there in terms of rain or just to keep an eye on equipment you may have out there, uh, again, that will show up on your home router. You can port forward to those things on your home router so that you can access them over the internet using your own IP address. These things are very powerful. They don't require a lot of knowledge or understanding to set up. All you do is initialize each piece by plugging it into your router at home so that it downloads the configuration from airstone.com, or I'm sorry, from airmesh.com. It checks into airmesh.com, adds itself to your account, and then you just go put it out in the field wherever you need additional Wi-Fi or additional coverage. There are caveats here. Now, because the air mesh hubs are essentially single radio repeaters, each time you hop over a remote hub, it will have the usable bandwidth. So to keep your bandwidth in a usable range, more than one megabit per second, we recommend you no, go no more than three hops across remote hubs. And remember, remote hubs are ones that are not attached to a remote bridge. So a, a hub that's attached to a bridge becomes another gateway. And it's only the ones that aren't attached to a bridge that are remote hubs. The other thing is that all these things need to be mounted at least 25 feet above any obstruction. So on top of buildings, on towers, on telephone poles, things like that, so that they have good line of sight from hub to hub or from bridge to bridge. That way they have good bandwidth between them. You minimize the loss of the signal and the bandwidth and maximize the range. There's plenty of more information out there on airstone.com. I especially recommend the how it works section for the curious. Uh, blog.airstone.com, this is where we write down all the uh, advice and the practical examples and other things about using or setting up the air stone air mesh system. There's a wealth of articles there on everything from how to use the drop cam camera with the air mesh network to how your router works and what you can do with it. There's a lot more power there than you may realize. Uh, and then support.airstone.com. This is our Zendesk instance. All kinds of information there about installation, troubleshooting, frequently asked questions there. If you're having questions about how things work, you can find the information there. There's more online at airstone.com. Uh, just check it out. And if you have questions, of course, you can always just send them to info at airstone.com. So with that, I would like to go ahead and open up the question lines here and see what we've got going. So the first question I've got was from me, which is, will air mesh work for me? And this is the most common question we get on the support line in varying degrees and types. So the air mesh system is designed specifically for extending the local area network, particularly for a farmer or other rural resident or business. It is optimized for delivering Wi-Fi to a relatively small number of devices that are spread out over a very large area. So what that means is it's it's really meant for farm use. It's not as good for uses like hotels or lodges, although there are a number of people who are using it that way. Um, stadiums, other outdoor venues where there are a lot of people, a relatively large number of people in a relatively small area, it's not really optimized for that. 
It also doesn't have the kind of blocking and security features that you'd want for providing access to non-friendly people, people you don't personally know. The way the Air Mesh Hub provides security is that it has a password. Anybody who knows that password can access the network and can access everything on the network. So there's no way to set up a separate network that is uh, that restricts access to your personal network. So the question of will Air Mesh work for me depends on what your intention is as well as the conditions. If you're close to town, what you'll find is that interference will make Air Mesh unusable or at least much less usable. Um, if you are uh, in an area with a lot of trees, you'll find that the trees will absorb the Wi-Fi unless you get it up above the trees. You know, if they're if you're you've got an orchard, of course, that's to be expected. If you're in a pine filled valley or something like that, it's a different matter. It won't work as well. You'll find maximum ranges in the area of hundreds of yards, not miles. So this is the reason why we have our 90-day money-back guarantee. We guarantee that Air Mesh will work for you, and if it doesn't, we will refund your full money for 30 days and 85% of your purchase price for another 60 days. So that's certainly the most generous warranty you're going to find out there. We also have our technical support team who can help you and our resources online that you can use to uh, find answers to the questions you have. So at this point, I'm going to take a quick look at the email and see if anyone has sent in emailed questions. Okay, I'll give it a few minutes here while we're waiting. Um, again, some of the questions we get are have to do with the range of air mesh, which is worth going over. Um, air mesh, the air mesh access points, the hubs, because they have very high power radios and very high gain antennas, are much more powerful than laptops or tablets or cell phones. Um, cell phones have the weakest Wi-Fi radios and the weakest antennas, the weakest radios because they are maximizing their battery performance. As a result, they have the shortest range. So what we typically see is that the hubs can communicate, if there's no interference, two and a half miles apart. But a cell phone typically will be four or five hundred yards from the hub and you'll start to lose contact with it. A laptop can go out about a thousand yards, about half a mile or more before it starts to lose contact with the hub. And tablets are somewhere in between that. So what you end up with is uh, pockets of Wi-Fi across your farm. But again, that's the reason for the cab hub is normally on the farm, you're driving around in a pickup or an ATV or a tractor or a sprayer, something like that. So you have the cab hub there to provide you with local Wi-Fi. If you have to go get out and go someplace, you still got Wi-Fi several hundred yards away from the vehicle. But as long as you've got your stationary hubs set up, the cab hubs will keep you connected to the network so that you can use the internet or your local network resources, local file shares, local printers, things like that. See any cameras or sensor networks or anything like that you've got on your local network easily from anywhere on the farm. All right, I'm just going to check one more time for additional questions. Make sure we don't have any. All right, looks like we're done. So I want to thank you for attending this webinar as a, a Google 
hang out on the air. Uh, it's a new medium for us. We're learning how to use it. Uh, I'd love your feedback on the webinar, on the Google Hangout, on all of that stuff. This will be posted on YouTube so that uh, you can see it again if you want. And if you have questions, comments, or concerns, please get in touch with us at info at airstone.com. Thank you very much again, and we'll be talking to you later.